hey, I don't want to be more efficient. I don't want to be a self-sustaining nonprofit. At the end of the day, I want to have a very robust discussion in America about why it is that a program in Washington, D.C. has to pull up in the back of the Mayflower Hotel and pick up leftover food to feed working poor people in America. I don't like it, and I'm not going to sit still. 51% um, of my time um, will always be devoted to what next? Why do we do the things we do? Who says we can't do anything different? That's where I'm coming from. That's where this article germinated. Um, it was also reinforced by about 114 different town hall meetings that were held last year before the Nonprofit Congress. Meeting with rank and file nonprofits that really make up 85% of the sector. Mom and pop stores out there, most of them under $750,000 a year, just trying to make payroll. Just trying to do something good in their community and they see no end in sight. And they're looking for some new alternative, something that gets them out of this trap. We've all fallen in, and not just us, the people we serve, the foundation world, we're all trapped in this charity model. So what I've tried to do, and what I'm pleased to see, is get a discussion going about what next. Um, you know, again, when I first started the kitchen, people said you can't do it. The laws prohibit it. The rules don't allow it. Um, all we did was say, okay, well, let's change those rules. Let's challenge those assumptions that homeless men and women can't be trained for work, that somehow it's illegal for restaurants and hotels to donate food. And we went out and we got laws changed. We didn't just stop and say, well, here's the laws as they exist. Let's try and work within the confines. It's like, no, let's push it and get new laws. I mean, again, thanks to the work of the D.C. Central Kitchen, I went, I mean, God bless America, Schmo like me went to the back of the Rose Garden and watched Bill Clinton sign a national law that protected, shielded all nonprofits, all donors of food from liability because we push to get a new law. That's what I'm saying. You know, to a certain extent, we're, we're held hostage and we assume that the laws that we inherited are the only laws. I look at the nonprofit sector, um, and I gotta be honest, to paraphrase um, my friend, Pablo Eisenberg, I've met the future and it's us. Um, we're the future of this country. We're one-tenth of the economy in America. And oftentimes terms like one-tenth kind of roll off, but what that, that represents the gross national product of India. I've said this for the past two years, but if we were a country, we'd be the seventh biggest economy on the planet, the nonprofit sector in America. Yet in the smallest town, we don't have a say in the budget process. We pace outside City Hall, waiting to see what gets cut, and then render our clothes and bark at the moon and think that's all we can do. Now I gotta tell you, everyone knows this, there are laws that allow us to be actively involved, and we should utilize every single one of those laws to the maximum, the maximum potential we have. And I'm in the middle of that in New Hampshire with the primary project, which I'll be happy to talk about later on. But I've got to tell you, at the end of the day, it feels to me a little bit like telling women in America that if you just keep playing by the rules, someday you'll make as much as men. You know, that's what we're hearing. Sure, we can play by the rules. Sure, we can use the laws. But at the end of the day, I question openly whether those laws were designed by people to keep us right where we're at. And I question those laws. I don't like where I'm at. I'm not going to sit still. And I'm going to work every single day with my brothers and sisters in this sector to start to come together and find a unified voice that starts to get us at the table.